right now. And uh, I would like us to start out today with a prayer for the Thanksgiving that is on that's coming but is on nobody's mind. Um, I, I know that many, of, I, I pray that many of you will not be gathered in large groups, not because I don't like it when you get together, but because I pray that you'll be safe. Um, the uh, CDC director said last week, if you're going to do Thanksgiving business as usual, look around your table and take a good look because three out of ten people you see will not be there at Christmas. And he was dead serious. Um, we, we are at a very, very difficult place, and I want us to, to lay our Thanksgiving week uh, in the hands of God. So please join me. Heavenly Father, today we thank you for the unseasonably warm November weather. We pray that you continue to keep the hunters safe. We ask that you bless every family that wonders, what will it be like without the big table and all the folks around and people complaining about somebody's recipe for cranberry sauce or whatever it is. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with us. We lay before you everyone that we know who is affected by COVID-19. We pray for all the families of our congregation and our community that you keep them safe. Holy One, we know you are with your people in their journey. We know you're with us in ours. As we end our journey together here in this portion of our worship together, thank you for all you've done. In grateful thanksgiving, we are your people. Amen. Uh, this morning, I would love to start things out with a, a, a hymn, a thanksgiving hymn that uh, I think everybody here has sung at least 10 times on a thanksgiving in their life. Uh, it's a really great one. I'd like to, you to join us as we sing, Rejoice the Lord is King. We are so lucky this morning, Donna's with us, and she has some goodies for us. So, Donna, it's all yours. Thanks.
Good morning, my friends. Today I'm going to talk to you a little about, last week we talked about our talents. And we talked about ice skating and we've talked about soccer and, and so on. But there are other talents that we have that make God very, very happy. My grandson, Mason, um, he last year took it upon himself to feel really bad. He learned about what it was like to be homeless. And he saw people laying on the grates at Mead Library to stay warm. And he took it upon himself to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for those people. And that was his talent to take care of something that really bothered him. And uh, this year, one of those really windy days that we had, he asked me if I would take him down to the library to see if those people were still there. And they were. And he went home and told his mom, we need to get an extra jar of peanut butter and a jar of jelly because I need to make those sandwiches again. That was his talent. That's a talent that it's not playing ball. It's not putting on skates. It's something in his heart that he felt that he needed to do to take care of those people. Um, the littlest gesture for him is a big gesture. So this week, when the worship committee got together, we sat down and we said, um, well, it was about a month ago, I think. We said, you know, there's elderly people. They don't have the internet. They don't have a way to hear our service. So we thought the packages that I normally would send out to our children, um, that we would do it for those adults. And we thought it would be nice for the kids to be involved with that project. So with the help of Jenny List this week, there was a package sent to all our, delivered to all of our children and asked to make a very simple wreath made out of paper and glue. All it took was a little bit of time for this talent to be set up. And I got a message from one of the moms, and Jolene, I hope you don't get upset that I mentioned your name, but Jolene contacted me, and she told me that her family sat down and made 10 of them for us. And that's a talent that made God so happy, and it made me happy. So just remember, the talents that you have don't necessarily mean the ball that you kick around. It also comes from your heart, and God is so happy with you. God loves you, and I love you too. And we love you too, Don. couldn't have set me up better for the psalm, Donna. The psalms today, we have two psalms today. They are both connected with all the scripture lessons that are appointed for this Sunday. They fit us well at the end of our journey. They fit us well at where we are in life. And they fit us well on what Donna had to say. The psalms are Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7, and Psalm 100. I would like to read them to you in that order without stopping and listen to how these two songs from the Psalms br blend together and bring us to where we need to be today. We begin with Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving. And extol with music him and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it. His hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if only you would hear his voice. 
Psalm 100 continues. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. And we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Um, I'd like to kind of go on with what Donna said about her wreath. Um, Many of the folks who don't have internet and are not able to be with us at times like this will receive the wreaths and there'll be candles with the wreath. This is your Advent wreath. So every Sunday, you'll be invited to put one of the candles, and you'll know which one, in its place on the wreath. And when we come to the end and we come to Christmas, there will be a candle for the center, and you will be able to tell which one that is too. So they'll be coming. So if you, if you know folks who don't have the Internet and they get the package, you can talk to them about it. And if they have any questions, you can help them and help them understand. We've been on a journey. Um, all the signs. We've pretty much gone through no water. Uh, <coughs> we've gone through the detour portion and pretty much headed through a bridge out and watch out for snakes. Uh, we've also come to where we would call this a road trip, and sometimes we wouldn't. And we found that one stop. Also, all the different pla- all the different places. We are God's people, and we've been gathered. Now, the the gospel lesson from Matthew today talks about the end of a journey of all time. And at the end of the journey of all time, we are told that this is what will happen. Uh, I would like to read it to you uh, the way you're used to hearing it from the New International Version. And then I would like to read it to you from the message. This is the one that you're used to hearing in church. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him. He will separate the peoples from one another as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I gave you something to, uh, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will look at him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we ever see you as a stranger and invite you in? or in needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brethren of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on the left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, and to eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me in. I needed clothes, and you didn't care. I was sick and in prison, and you did not come and look after me. They replied to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply to them, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do 
for one of the, of the least of these you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Okay. Now I'd like to read it to you from the message. See what you hear and how it's changed. When he finally arrives, blazing in beauty and all his angels with him, the Son of Man will take his place on his glorious throne. Then all the nations will be arranged before him, and he will sort people out much the same way as a shepherd sorts out the sheep and goats, putting the sheep on his right and the goats to his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Enter, you who are blessed by my father. Take what's coming to you in this kingdom. It's been ready for you since the world's foundation. And here's why. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was homeless and you gave me a room. I was shivering and you gave me clothes. I was sick and you stopped to visit me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then those sheep are going to say, Master, are you sure? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we ever see you sick or in prison and come to you? Then the king will say, I'm telling you the solemn truth. Whenever you did, uh, did one of these things to someone overlooked and ignored, that was me. You did it to me. Then he turned to the goats and he says, Get out, worthless goat. You're good for nothing but the fires of hell. And why? Because I was hungry and you gave me no meal. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was homeless and you gave me no bed. I was shivering and you gave me no clothes. Sick and in prison and you never visited. Then those goats will say to him, Master, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry or thirsty, homeless or shivering or sick and in prison and did not help? He will answer them. I'm telling you the solemn truth. Whenever you failed to do this to someone who was being overlooked and ignored, that was me. You failed to do it to me. Then those goats will be herded to their eternal doom, but the sheep to their eternal reward. Here ends the reading of today's scriptures. Um, I, I'm so used to just kind of sitting in the other chair and turning and saying, well, Dan, what do you think? Uh, I can't do that today uh, because uh, Dan's like the rest of you home and uh, at quarantined and dealing with what many of you have already dealt with. But we talked a lot uh, in, our, in our worship meeting about this very passage. And especially, especially the way uh, the message takes and describes the people as those who are being ignored and overlooked. Because in our world today, it's pretty easy to find people who are ignored and overlooked. We have just spent five and a half months of, of turmoil, and we're still at it. And there are people who believe that they are overlooked now, and there were people who believe they were overlooked before. We struggle with what to do. What do God's people do in this time? How do we bring unity to a nation of people who feel like they're sheep and goats. There's something you should all know uh, about this. As Dan would say, I'm the old Bible guy, so I get to tell you these kinds of things. Um, in Israel, uh, at the time of Jesus, there was something you should know about sheep and goats. Uh, first of all, sheep and goats are colorblind. They can't tell the difference between white, black, and, and anything except white and black, and most everything looks so, some kind of shade of gray. Uh, sheep and goats are raised together. When they go out into the pasture, they, take, they don't keep one herd of goats, one herd of sheep. The shepherd takes goats and sheep. 
when the kids are little in the spring and they're growing up, if they're hungry and they look, look up and there happens to be a teat right there, they'll eat and it doesn't matter to them whether it's a goat or a sheep. And it doesn't matter to the moms either. They just do that. So they all live together. And they don't understand they're different. Until in the fall when they bring them in and they're going to be sheared. The lambs and the sheep's wool is different than the wool that comes from the goats. And it's used for different things. So it's separated. So in order to shear them, you separate the goats from the sheep. So when he tells them that this is like when the shepherd is separating the goats from the sheep, it's at the end to get to take off what they've done. And so he does tells them something they're all pretty much used to. It's like reading one of those signs, okay? Everybody knows what to do with the do not enter. You don't go in. And the stop, we know a stop. We're pretty much not too certain about the speed limit or the slow. We don't really follow those too good, but that's okay. We understand what's happened. And then the Lord looks at his, his flock that he has separated. Notice they're all his. None of them aren't his. No one is left out. And in our journey, uh, what Donna said about each of us having a talent, whether it's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, or whether it's giving a blanket to somebody who's cold, or a glass of water, that's our talent. And if we do that, most especially, we don't do it because we think it's going to give us that much. We just do it because, just like Jaden, it just feels right inside. If I don't do it, I can't, it's not going to be right. Jesus calls us, folks, to live our faith in this journey. Everywhere we go, to live what we know. Um. I'm, going to, I, I'm not going to pick on my, my dear departed lovely wife. I'm just going to tell you something about Lisa. Um, Lisa and I traveled a lot, whether we went to Chicago with the, the bus trips with the kids, or we, would, we went to Memphis a couple times, and she would always pick on me, and so would the other guys that were with us in Memphis. Because every time somebody came up and begged from me, no matter what it was, you got a buck, you got some, I, I, I just always gave him something. And we we're walking back to our hotel one night, and Lisa said to me, she said, why do you always give them something? And I, I, I guess I looked at her and I just said, because I can. I have something, and they don't, and... I think God wants me to do that. The next day, we went to breakfast, and as usual, Lisa had half of her breakfast box. We walked out into the park, and there we are, and here comes a young fella who'd been sleeping in a doorway. And he came out because I was smoking a cigar, and he really thought that was great. And he asked me if I had an extra one, so I gave him one. And then he said, wow, that breakfast must have been good. Boy, I bet that's really good. And Lisa just reached over and handed it to him. And when he walked away, I said, Lisa, why did you do that? And she looked at me and said, because I could. God does not ask you or me to change the entire world. God does not ask you or me to see to it that there are no hungry people, that there are no cold people, that there is no one who's sick, and that there's no one who's hurting. 
all he tells us to do is to, in our journey, gathered as his people, to be aware of the people around us, to be aware of those who are ignored and overlooked, and to be the one who first offers a hand. Do you notice how inexpensive all the things he said were? A drink of water? Offering a place to sleep? You know, for the guy who started out with his mom and dad sleeping in a barn and being born there, he pretty much understood what it meant to have a place to stay. He does not expect it to be the Ritz-Carlton or the most expensive thing you can do. We are just asked not to overlook not to look past, not to forget the rest of the people in our world. So, now, don't be afraid to call somebody you know has COVID. Don't be afraid to tell them you're praying for them. Don't be afraid to help that person in the neighborhood who hasn't been out of their house for a month. Don't be afraid to just smile and say hi. Be the people of God he has called you to be. We ha he has blessed us so much. So many things. And he only asks us to decide what to share when we have not overlooked and not forgotten the people around us. It's, 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 it's easy. Dan, Dan reminded us, I think it was last week, it's easy to drive by that person with a sign and not make eye contact. It's easy to sort of move over on the sidewalk when you see that person sitting there with a, with a hat out or with a tin out looking for some cash and just kind of back away because you don't know. See, it's, it's easy to overlook. It's easy to not care. But it's just as easy to see and to share. Thank you all for traveling with us in this, this journey this fall. Um, I want to thank Jill for singing today and for all the rest that you do. I want to thank Joette for all the time. She picked exactly the right hymn for us to sing on a day like we were celebrating. I want to thank Donna for all the creativity and all the important things that she's put together for the kids and the families. Um, I very much want to thank Lynn for all the extra hours in the office to get things done that we make sound so simple and make it possible. I want to thank Steve and Ken and Tom for all the hours they put in upstairs. And I know when you don't have sound and I know when things don't go quite right, they're the first people that we turn, to, but they're working as hard as they can, more hours than you know, to make it possible. So please, pause sometime this week. Give thanks for your staff here at St. John's. Give thanks for the things that God has given you that he invites you to share with those who do not. Give thanks for every chance you have to see the one who is overlooked, to see the one who is set aside, and to be there. I give thanks for each of you, for your families, for all you have done and have been to the people of this community. And I pray that as we go ahead this year, we can celebrate Christmas in a way that will be very special. We will not have any 
in gathered services until after the first of the year. We are listening to the CDC, the Wisconsin Department of Health, the Governor's Office, Wisconsin Council of Churches, Wisconsin United Church of Christ, in all their, their urging us to keep people home and keep people safe. We pray for all your families, and we thank you for who you are. Um, Lynn, have you got the, the prayers for us? Thank you. Oh, today, um, let's see. This is one that uh, you're going to have to sing along with me at home. You don't get to say happy 70th anniversary very often, okay? But Vic and Arliss Holberg, today is their 70th anniversary. So, happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, Arliss and Vic. Happy anniversary to you. My goodness, God's blessings on 70 years. We've been asked to pray for Josh, Dale, Bobby, Danny, Kathy, Linda, Jane, Tom and family, Susie, Anna and family, Diane, Ruby, Roger and Diane, Phil, Tommy, Dawn, the Metz, Gamak family, Dan, uh, Randy, the Steinhardt family, Kristen, Dan, Patty, Lisa, Tracy, Jamie, Faye, Margie, Sue, Sandy and Dave, Kelly, Debbie, Jane, Riney, Dale Binsler, the Dale Binsler family, Mason and family, Dennis L., Sharon, Patty, Patty G. and family, Jackie and Mike, Candy, Linda, Pastor Dan and family, Clayton and family, Carolyn, Jennifer, Shirley and Harold, Lori, Brandon, Cameron, Donna B., prayers for our country, prayers for our friends and family who have COVID-19, prayers for those of us missing our family and friends as we gather this Thanksgiving. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, all of these names are lifted up to you by people who care. They are not overlooked. We know you will answer, and we thank you for hearing. Today, we're gathered, Lord, and we're grateful. We pray especially for those families that are mourning and those families that are scared because their COVID-19 tests are not back or because someone they know and love is very, very ill. We pray for all those who are separated and disjointed from their families in this Thanksgiving season. Be with them all. Lord, be with all the technology people everywhere because it's going to be a rough weekend for them. Phone lines will be jammed. Uh, the, the internet will be plugged. And things won't always go the way we want them. Holy One, be with all of us. Give us patience and courage in these days. And teach us to be your people. We thank you for the chance to be St. John's. We ask you to be with us as we gather with Ebenezer and with um, St. Paul's uh, virtually on Wednesday night for our annual Thanksgiving Eve service. Bless every pie that's at home so that all the individual pie nights will be very good. Be with us, Lord. And hear us as gathered and connected and yet separated, we together pray the prayer 
that Jesus asked us to. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, we want to sing <clears throat> one of the songs that we've sung around here for a long time. And uh, it's uh, special for today. Because in your life and everything you do, I'm going to ask you to do exactly what the song says. To let Jesus shine wherever you go. We'll sing Shine, Jesus Shine. Thanksgiving week, 
May the peace of God, which goes beyond everything we understand and past all the things we can't understand, guard and keep each of you in the knowledge that no matter what goes on in your life, you are personally and individually loved by the one who has risen from the dead. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be and abide with each and every one of you now and always. Happy Thanksgiving. God's peace to you all.